Welcome to the Sun Coast and the Sunshine State. We're here for round four of the UIM Class One World Championship. Team Monster Energy MCON are dominating the standings, having earned points in every race this season so far. Right behind them is Team DeFalco with 55 points. DF Young in third with 47, X Insurance with 18, and rounding out the field, Morpheus 8 with 15. But with two races left to go, there's still plenty of points up for grabs for DeFalco and DF Young to stay in the mix. Speaking of Team DeFalco, I had a chance to catch up with Billy Moore to see how their qualifying session went yesterday. Take a look. UIM Class 1 qualifying highlights here as we take a look at some of the action that went on. Congratulations, by the way, to the DeFalco team. They are the number one qualifiers here. 321.08. They've qualified in the number one spot at nearly every event so far this year. However, qualifying is qualifying, and it's over. It's all about race time now, and we'll feature those. A team that has proven that they are fast, taking home every poll so far in qualifying this season. Billy Moore from Team DeFalco. You guys once again took that poll, but you only got one lap in out of two. What happened yesterday? Um, yesterday on the second lap, we were almost finished up, and we were going through the top corner, and all of a sudden just lost power. Engine went to full revs. Uh, this drop box on the other side, it basically, the gears disintegrated. It took out the transmission on the engine, so the boys were up last night, had everything apart, all new internals, new transmission on, so hopefully we're good to go for today's race. That's the nature of racing, isn't it? Sometimes things go wrong, but really, it, it, once you get out on the water, all of that prep work, it really just comes down to running your best race. Definitely. I mean, I'm glad it happened yesterday and not today, so it's one of those things that could be a blessing in disguise and it's racing you never know what's going to fail it could be a five dollar part or a fifty thousand dollar part nothing's going to fail ready for race day oh yeah we're ready so we'll go blast it and see what happens well you can see team defalco is ready to go and down here on the docks it is all hands on deck with these boats and i'm going to have a quick chat with alex pratt from df young good boy vodka team you guys had a bit of a qualifying run yesterday, but as we know from your past, that doesn't seem to matter when it comes time to get into the water and race. Yeah, we had a few issues with qualifying yesterday, some overheating. Um, hopefully it's a little bumpy out there today, but uh, we feel really good right now, and we hope the boat's gonna run good. So we're happy. Excellent. Well, best of luck out there. I'm going to sneak on by and speak to your competitor down here, Team Monster Energy. Like I mentioned, these guys are absolutely dominating. And as you can see, they've got their race suits on. They are ready to go. Myrick Coyle, how are you feeling heading into this race today? Well, the water's calmed down a little bit this morning. The fog's lifted. So uh, compared to an hour ago, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah, just you try to go out there and get this uh, 30 minutes plus one in there and then uh, see what we can do. Excellent. Let me see if I can grab Tyler Miller right here. Tyler, you're all smiles this morning. You guys are the ones to beat, I feel like, when it comes down to it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, uh, super excited. We made our adjustments last night after the prop failure, and uh, we feel really good this morning. You know, I think the ground's, ground's well still out there. The fog's just lifted, so we're ready to go race and get this Class 1 underway and uh, get back here on the podium. I love to hear it. All right, well, everybody is getting ready. Before we get out in the water, we're gonna head up to Mike and Ken right after this. The APBA P1 Offshore Championship Series brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. Good look at some of these boats. They are incredible, as we'll also take a look at our course here as well. Six miles in distance, as you can see there. We will have the Monster Mile as well, right there where the checkered flag is. They'll be able to leg these things out, provided the conditions will allow them to do so on this big course. And a good look at all five boats here as they make their way around. They will look for the green flag, of course. When they get to those green buoys, they are starting. This is a 30 minute plus one lap race. DeFalco sitting on the pole, DF Young in second, Monster Energy MCON in third, X Insurance in fourth, and Morpheus eight in fifth. And now the DeFalco boat starting to pick up the pace there. Looks like the MCON Monster Energy boat had to, had to get out of the throttle just a little bit. Here comes the X Insurance boat trying to get a run out of here. Green flag, we're racing here in Sarasota. Class one style, the big 
boys are out here to play. Well, Britt and Randy pulled the slingshot back, if you would, and they let the slingshot go, and look, it paid off. They are in the early lead. DeFalco trying to charge up the inside. Good state by Morpheus, eight on the outside. Boy, what a great start. Oh, man, huge air for the Mazda Energy MCON boat. Yeah, it might still be off on their setup because they're losing ground really, really quickly, Ken. But X Insurance is doing battle with DeFalco. Look at the rookie, Brett Lilly, throttling only his second race in Class 1, and he is up there in the lead going against Billy Moore. Yeah, great effort there. You talked about it. Well, they mentioned it after qualifying. Unfortunately, they do not have the preferred set of props on that Monster Energy MCON boat, so uh, I don't know if they'll be a factor here. Even though they came in here as a points leader, it's a couple of wins. They've been on the podium every single event. We'll find out how things go here today, but it could be a long day for them. 30 minutes plus one lap, as you can see up there at the top. Look at Morpheus 8 running third on the outside. D.F. Young is going to be on the inside. D.F. Young a little bit slower than I had anticipated. Looks like DeFalco has gotten around. Around X Insurance on the inside, they take over the first place spot. Let's see if Randy and Kent, Randy Kent and Britt rather, can hold more speed on the outside and take it away from DeFalco. Yeah, it looked like they might have been taking that little wider line there, so that opened up the door for the Falco boat to jump up in there. There's the DF Young boat back in there as well. The X Insurance boat around the outside, the Morpheus 8 out there, and uh, keeping pace here for sure. All five boats, wow, way out there for the Morpheus 8. DF Young is starting to find its speed. Let's hope when it lightens up a little bit. I don't think it's as rough as they want it to be. I mean, it's bumpy out there, don't get me wrong. There's definitely some hop going on, but I think DF Young would want it much rougher than this because that boat could span across the top of it. But what a run for this X Insurance team, Ken. You know, they've they've had to find their way in this boat. They've had to find their setup. They're currently running in a solid second place behind DeFalco. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm really impressed with how far they have come in a short amount of time after Sheboygan. They really were not in the hunt there at Sheboygan at all, but came out here and certainly showed that they have a lot of speed. Good look at the X Insurance boat right there. By the way, the owner of that boat is up there in that helicopter. That is Rick Lindsay. I had a chance to speak with him last night. He and his good friend, the Lucky Leprechaun, is also flying another helicopter that has divers in it uh, just in case we need them. Hopefully they are not used at all here today, but a great shot of that X Insurance boat. Beautiful looking piece, 48 foot in length, uh, manufacturer MTI, 2015 pedigree, so it's a good looking boat, and of course this one has suffered a big crash at the end of last year, and they had to fix it up. They're not far behind DeFalco, about a rooster tail length back, staying on that outside lane, staying in that clean water. They're trying to find their line right now, and I think as this race wears on, as time wears down, we might see them make a move. Yeah, so the DeFalco boat a little bit shorter at 46 feet, so if it does get choppy out of here, it starts to pick up, you would say that the advantage would lean the other way. You were talking about the DF Young Good Boy Vodka machine. That is the biggest boat in the fleet at 51 feet. So that's why you said you thought that they would, uh, they'd have a little bit more speed out here in this rough water. As we take a look here at the DF Young Good Boy Vodka machine, they are side by side now with the X Insurance boat and look like they're going to make a bid for second place. Well, they were all the way on the inside of the last lap. They've gone all the way to the outside now as X Insurance had to cut, has to cut across the wake of DeFalco. And Ken, anytime you get in that aerated water, especially in salt water, the bubbles last so much longer than in fresh water. It's just like driving on ice, if you would. You lose a little bit of traction. We were watching that sun, uh, the video of your son, and when he went up off of that jump and he lost traction, same thing can happen in salt water. Not in a detrimental way, of course, but they could use a little bit of speed when that happens. DF Young has pulled well ahead of X Insurance, solid second place. Let's see if the Mystic can go after the victory hull in class one. Good race for Rich Wyatt and Alex Pratt currently in second place, but X Insurance back on the inside. And here comes Morpheus 8. Ken, Morpheus 8 after a rough day yesterday. They look good. Yeah, I mean, literally no data in that boat at all. He just had to take a swing at it, an educated guess. Of course, a couple of pretty talented people inside there. Carlos de Casada is doing the driving, a uh, longtime sports car driver. He and his son still being very successful. But, of course, the guy on the throttles, they don't, they don't get any better than that guy, some, some guy named Johnny Tomlinson. Uh, he would be described as the goat in offshore power <laughs> racing, if you would. Look at X Insurance, so Ken, that inside line paid off well for them. They are now challenging back for second place they're not quite close enough to push df young out df young could come down on them and you know make him slow up going to that corner but what a run for randy and Britt as they both chase down to falco the falco boat looking really solid out there but this is where the battle is for second place excellent battle at that let's see if rich and alex pinch down on the x insurance but they might just slightly 
leave enough room in there for him. In fact, insurance has to cut back across that wake. It's going oh, to slow down. Look at that right acceleration, there. yeah. He checked up. Here comes the X insurance boat. It takes him a while to get back up to speed here as well. So the X insurance boat is going to take back over that second position here. Uh, DF Young slowed way too fast there. Stay with us. We'll be back with more great boat racing in just a moment. And we welcome you back here. We're in Sarasota. Looking forward to this one for sure. The P1 Powerboat Grand Prix celebrating 40 years. We're watching the UIM Class 1 boats. While we were at break, a lot of action went on for second place. The DF Young Good Boy Vodka Boat actually took over second, but then checked up for a moment, and that allowed the X Insurance Boat to jump back up into second place. This is a look back at what we had here. As you can see, the replay and the DF Young Boat on the outside there making a strong run and was able to get up into second place. X Insurance trying to fight back, and all of a sudden, the DF Young Boat checked up just a little bit. That allowed the X Insurance Boat to sail back into second place. This is the pass right here for second. This is where you talked about DF Young checking up right about there. All of a sudden, they slowed briefly, not sure why, but that, that allowed X Insurance to make the pass on the inside. So Ken, after watching that replay, I think I can pinpoint what happened. I think DF Young went into guardian mode because you saw them just slow quickly and then get right back into it. So they reset the computer on the boat, got it guardian mode, but they are back on the gas now. No doubt about it, and here we go, making another bid for second place. I think that's a great call, by the way, Mike. And had a chance to speak with Britt Lilly. I did not realize there's variations of guardian mode. Yep. Sometimes it will pull it back just 5% or 10%, depending on what the issue is. And X Insurance now making another run back. Boy, what a battle. And Morpheus 8 sitting right there as well. Johnny and Carlos have set their sights on second place, I think, Ken, and they are going to go after it. It's interesting. We saw this yesterday in a lot of our racing. This water oh. is so, it's so different for each boat. And we see some boats pull ahead, some boats fall behind, and it's just a battle back and forth as X Insurance is back on the inside. DF Young, Good Boy Vodka to try and take the speed, maintain their speed on the outside. Yeah, that was a great call. Look, you can see he tried to stay inside of the wake, but finally he had no choice but to get into the wake of the DeFalco boat. Curious if he'll lose a little bit there, as you were talking about before, that aerated water, if you will. On the outside, the DF Young boat carrying good speed for sure. Well, and sometimes you just don't have anywhere to go. They can't run any sort of a different line as they get real close together there. You do not want to cross the rooster tails in saltwater. Don't get these engines wet as they will get unhappy. But look at this battle for second place. As you can see, X Insurance there, Ken, took a couple of hops. They had to slow a little bit, and that allowed DF Young, Good Boy Vodka, to pull ahead. I think this water is much more suited for DF Young than we thought in the beginning. These big boats are flying for sure. 2,200 horsepower here, courtesy of a couple of uh, competition Mercury power plants. They are twin turbocharged, a ton of torque. But as you were talking about Guardian, if anything goes wrong and it pulls that motor back a little bit and they get out of the boost, it can be devastating for them to get back up and running again. Yeah, and that's what happened to DF Young yesterday. Just water pressure issues kind of plagued them during their qualifying session. They're going to adjust their water pickups to see if they can prevent that from happening. Look at that shot of speed there by DF Young. Why on that part of the course, Ken? Oh, X Insurance has slowed a lot, Ken, a lot, significantly. I expect Morpheus 8 maybe to go around them now. Yeah, and uh, I wonder if that's another Guardian issue here. And sometimes you have to pull the throttles all the way back yep. and go forward again to, to get it out of Guardian. I don't see that happening here either, so it looks like this one will be terminal. What a what a shame here for Britt and Kent. Uh, tough day for the X Insurance team they were running. This was by far their best performance. Uh, they, they had to be super excited. Now, now they get it up and going, which makes me think it might be that Guardian issue. They may have had to shut oh, that engine yeah. off and get it refired and get back up to speed. Monster Energy MCON has also gotten by them, so they are at the back of the pack now as DeFalco continues to lead. That's our leaders, and you, know, you were talking about as we took a look at the boat there early on the top of the show, the, the surface drives that this boat uses with a rudder in the back to steer it, and we haven't seen the Monster Energy MCON boat too much here because they just haven't been a factor with those prop issues, but they have the M6 stern drives, so that's how they steer the boat, and the X Insurance is kind of a hybrid of the both where they yep. have the stern drives, but they have a rudder, so the stern drives are fixed, the skags are shaved off the bottom, but they have a rudder to steer the boat. And I believe that's the X Insurance boat, unfortunately, has lost power. So Britt Lilly and Randy Kent, looks like their day is done here. 
<laughs> okay, let's get it out to Taylor Snyder. She has a little bit more info on the ex-insurance boat. Out here on the water, I was just able to catch a quick word with Britt Brit Lilly and Randy Kent on, on the water. Unfortunately, did lose a motor, so that concludes their race day for today. But I could hear them behind me shouting out, X Insurance is coming. It's time. They're ready for some more action come the next race. They'll get everything back going, and hopefully we can see some more success from them in the next race. Until then, we've still got more going on the water. Let's head back up to the booth. Gentlemen. Uh, going back and take a look at the 06 Monster Energy MCON boat here. And once again, struggling just a little bit, but currently, I believe, in the fourth. Fourth position, yeah, yeah, the fourth position, yeah, because Morpheus having such a great run. So not a position that we're used to seeing the Monster Energy MCON boat in. They have been extremely good all season long. So uh, as we watch that 06 Monster Energy MCON machine, our Taylor Snyder has a little bit more information on this boat as well. Taylor? I was able to chat with somebody from the Monster Energy MCON team to find out what is going on with the boat. They said so far so good, it will be a war of attrition. So now with X Insurance boat out, hopefully their chances just increased a little bit. They'll find a little bit more speed, hopefully, and make their way back through the pack. Until then, DeFalco is finding that dominating lead, but there's still some time to go. So it really is anybody's race at this point. Let's keep it up. Up with the gentleman in the booth. But Ken, this might be the battle here for a second. I think this? Morpheus 8's got something for DF Young, Good Boy Vodka. How about this? Morpheus 8 coming back at him now. Carlos Di Casada inside, doing the driving duty for sure. These guys have some speed here. Now Alex and Rich can run a wide course, Ken. They can be defensive, right? They can get, they can kind of go wherever they want, kind of block that line for as long as they possibly can. If Morpheus is making up that much ground, just like yesterday, some boats are faster on some parts of the course, some boats are faster on other parts of the course, and it really looked like Morpheus 8 liked our north turn, our our, 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 our narrow rather of the two turns, and they like running that leg down towards the beach. It looked like the Morpheus 8 might be able to get around the DF Young Good Boy Vodka machine, but then suddenly lost a lot of ground. With that said, has closed about half of that gap back up again. So Ken, let's talk setup because I think that's what this is. You have a Here he comes. You have a taller setup, which is going to get you more top speed on the long straightaways. You could have a shorter setup, which is going to get you acceleration out of the corners, but you're going to run out of that speed on long straightaways. I think Morpheus 8 has a tall setup. I think they're able to run more speed because they were a rooster tail and a length half behind DF Young when they exited that turn. Look, they're not even to the next turn, and they've passed him for second place. Now, if DF Young has an acceleration setup, if they have a little bit shorter of a setup, they'll be able to exit the turn and build more speed quicker than Morpheus 8, and that will allow them to maybe make up a little bit of ground on the inside. Carlos and Johnny, very respectable. They've left enough room for DF Young, Good Boy Vodka, just to get to the inside. Didn't pinch down onto him too much, but I think they might be side by side. Let's see if my theory's right, Ken. Good look up underneath the tunnel, and DF Young Boat is coming back. Keel to keel, that is the width of that tunnel there, 72 inches. It will pack some air for sure. This is a great shot of how much these boats are bouncing around. So this will be the last lap this time by as they will enter the Monster Energy Mile for the last time today. What a beautiful shot into Falco right now. Ken, it's their race to lose. Yeah, looking for the hat trick here, if you will. They were back to back at Sheboygan. This would be the third consecutive win if they can hang on here and finish this one up with this last lap. Great looking boat here as well. Had a chance to shake hands with uh, with Billy Moore a little bit earlier this weekend as I get used to this style of racing as well. Just a wonderful guy. They finally got those issues solved and once they did we talked about it before I mean they've had big speed qualifying number one at pretty much every event out here and then a huge lead but would have something that would that would bite them before they could get to the checkered flag. But the last three races, man, they have been good. And I got to tell you, man, it looks like he has not let up at all. We talked about saving that a little bit, but he's comfortable where he's at. And they are driving that thing hard, looking for the checkered flag here. Coming by, they're going to make it three consecutive wins back to back at Sheboygan. And they get it done here at the prestigious Sarasota P1 Powerboat Grand Prix. And congratulations to the Morpheus 8 boat did not complete a single lap in qualifying one day ago. And we'll show you our results here, courtesy of Monster Energy for the UIM Class 1 World Championship. DeFalco taking the win. Boat number 18, Billy Moore, Mike Falco. 
Second place, Morpheus 8, Allegra Motorsports, Carlos Dick inside of Johnny Thompson. What a great run for that team. Third place, DF Young, Good Boy Vodka, Alex Pratt, Rich Wyatt. Fourth place, Monster Energy, MCON, and X Insurance going out early with a mechanical issue. The Mercury Racing wide open moment of the race looks like this, and that is Team DeBalco out front leading the group. Yeah, this is actually lap two, and as you can see, they are all still bunched up here pretty tightly. Billy, I'm going to hand you your checkered flag right now. What a race. You guys absolutely took away with that lead, and nobody was able to catch you for the rest of the race. Yeah, we took off on the start. X Insurance had a real good jump, so we just decided push, push, push at first, try and get a good cushion and then back it down. And our spotters told us that Morpheus was coming. I've known Johnny for years. He's kind of a mentor of mine. I've known him since I was a kid. So I was like, I can't let Johnny beat me. So we picked it up the last lap. But I, I knew we had enough cushion. He wasn't going to be able to catch us. But we were just trying to look after the boat the last five laps. Well, what an incredible day we had here on the water in Sarasota, Florida. Team DeFalco showed up and took home an incredible win here. That means it's anybody's game heading into St. Pete for round five of the UIM Class 1 World Championship Series. Until then, I'm Taylor Snyder. See you next time.